ensure that um, the legislation of its uh, earlier electoral reform orders are tabled before Parliament in 30 days. But that is yet to happen. So the Supreme Court, uh, while delivering the verdict on the presidential election petition filed by former Prime Minister Maman Babazi Ali, said that the recommendations would improve the 2021 general elections and beyond and would foster their fair play, democracy, law and order in the politics of this country. So what does the government's failure to table these electoral reforms meant? But still on the road to 2021, let's start this conversation from a story that is still fresh in our minds. Chadondo Easter, Member of Parliament Robert Chaglani, also known as Bobby Wine, yesterday unveiled the People Power's coordinators ahead of plans for countrywide electoral campaigns ahead of 2021 general election. The coordinators were unveiled at the media briefing at his home in Magere in Wakiso district. Let's take a look. And our guests this morning are Ms. Sarah Birete, of course, an Associate Director of Centre for Constitutional Governance, and Ambassador Henry Maiga will be joining us for the conversation. Good morning. The musician made his way from his house to address members of his team gathered in a tent in his compound with what has become People Power Anthem. The meeting was called to unveil regional coordinators for his movement. The meeting attracted several MPs, most of them selected to become regional coordinators, although they belong to established political parties. We were not supposed to. Noticeable among the MPs is FDC's Gilbert Olanya and some NRM rebel MPs. Some of the regional coordinators are Cassiano Wadri and James Achidri for West Nile, Lucy Akelo and Gilbert Olanya for Acholi, Jonathan O'Doul and Moses Okot for Lango, Susan Amero and Angelino Sege for Teso, Innocent Tukundane and Thomas Kakuru for Toro Region, Mbote Kamagafa and Moses Kakama for Ankole, Barnabas Ningasimire for Bunyoro, John Baptist Nambeshe for Bugisu, Osman Basalirwa for Busoga, Agnes Nabulindo for Bukedi, former leader of opposition Win Kiza and Robert Centenary for Renzori Region, Meda Segona and Latif Sebagala for Kampala Metropolitan Area, Paul Senluta Maguzi and Brenda Nabukenya for Greater Ruero. Chagulani explains that they were compelled to hold the media briefing at his home as a last resort after all hotels shunned his team. Even when we booked and paid, they were told that they could not host us, and if they were stubborn enough to host us, they would face consequences. However, he added that the team selected was intended to overwhelm the ruling NRM in the coming elections and stake a realistic claim to leadership. Since we started, there have been countless things to celebrate. Key of Rich is a politically conscious population ready to kick Museveni and his cronies out of power in 2021, and I am very serious about this. But some, like FDC's Gilbert Olanya, say the success of the opposition in 2021 will depend on ongoing talks between the four-time presidential candidate, retired Colonel Kiza Besije, and Bobby Wine. My appeal to Dr. Kiza Besije and Bobby Wine, the most important thing now is for you to agree and rally behind a candidate. But let's have leaders that can drive this agenda to streamline it, to structure it, and uh, that's why we decided to come up with coordinators across the country in different facets to do the mobilization, to mobilize, that's very important, but to also organize, to organize our supporters, because there are supporters all over the place, but they, there is need for a leadership. As you can see, the national coordination team is already dispersing, charged with a big responsibility to ensure that by the time the Electoral Commission clears campaigning, the pressure group has presence across the country. But whether it will be able to sell through the intimidation and violence as they claim to be going through right now, perhaps only time can tell. Edward Muhumza. Right there, that brings us to the conversation this early morning. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Andrew. It's an honor to have you, Ambassador. A very good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, I'll start with you, Ambassador. Ambassador Maiga, you come from the NRM. What do you make of uh, the People Powers Coordinator's launch or unveiling? Well, first of all, I think I, I must say that uh, you're welcome on board. Okay. Because in my view, if people are organizing, especially in the times before the general elections in 2021, mm -hmm. that gives them an opportunity to experience the political ground and the temperatures in the country. Mm -hmm. And as far as democracy is concerned, and as far as uh, uh, those elections which are coming are concerned, mm -hmm. 
And uh, in my view, it is uh, really gross of democracy because there was a time in this country when it wasn't possible for mm. anybody to do the kinds of things which I saw yesterday, mm. that uh, people can really put up a team to uh, canvas for support. Mm. Uh, in my view, that is a plus for our country's democracy because democracy uh, actually takes time to uh, really uh, mature. Mm. Uh, you always give an example of what uh, the U.S. has gone through in the last 250 years. Mm. After now, they still are grappling with quite a number of things in as far as democ democracy is concerned, especially when it comes to campaign financing. So, mm. in my view, this is gross, gross of democracy. Yeah, you say democracy ambassador, but these uh, people power pressure group, they said they went to a couple of hotels in Kampala, and these hotels were, were, were intimidated by good God knows who that if you host them you're going to be uh you, you'll face the consequences i quote about why and how we actually stated it and uh, you're saying democracy isn't uh silencing other practitioners hoteliers in the business land not to host some people against democracy absolutely because i don't know i'm not aware of any in a uh, cabinet meeting or central executive committee meeting or mm. national executive committee meeting where they mm. sat and they said they instructed hotels mm. in this city not to host any, any of these people. Mm. But of course you and I know that there are laws that govern those kinds of meetings. Mm. And therefore if some are saying okay bring, bring a police kit so that we can allow you to have a meeting and so on and so forth, mm. that's just within the law and the people in this country are uh, too oblivious about uh, how to go about the laws and therefore that definitely is going to cause a problem uh, to quite a number of political organizations that are trying to canvass for support before the 2021 elections. Mm. So um, if people can follow the law to the latter, mm. I believe that they can have those meetings. Anyway. Sir, what do you make of people powers uh, unveiling yesterday? I'm sure it was taking a lot of steam online and beyond you saw this. Yes, I, I did and uh in, in democracy, mm. every group should get organized to compete mm. for power. Mm. I agree with the submissions of ambassador, <coughs> but I want to underscore the, the infringement mm. on people's political freedom and yeah. that Article 29 of the Constitution. If you look at the laws like the Public Order Management Act, which mm. we challenged six years ago, yeah. The Constitutional Court has finally had our petition, mm -hmm. but we are yet to get the ruling. Mm -hmm. they are issue, there are situations in place that shrink both political and civic space, mm. that do not allow the people to enjoy their fundamental rights and freedoms as enshrined in the Constitution. Mm. And among them is the abuse or misabuse of the Public Order Management Act. Mm. The police even applies it where it does not apply. Mm. The definition of a public meeting in that law is the most abused definition in this country. What do you mean by it that? It does not apply to mm. meetings in-house, like you go to a hotel room, mm. the Public Order Management Act does not apply. Mm. It was applied to Bebo Wines concerts. Mm. It does not in any way apply to social gather mm. gatherings. Mm. The, the, next, the recent victim is Chameleon. Mm. Chameleon was free to organize shows and until he joined the opposition ranks. Now he's no longer free to organize shows. Such things are the constitution and should be condemned. Mm. Yeah. So um, uh, getting now into the bigger conversation, the Supreme Court, it's now one month. Actually, um, according to statistics, it's a month ago uh, since the Supreme Court ordered government to ensure legislation on earlier electoral reforms. Uh, Ambassador Maiga, what, what is really happening in courts of law? Is, is the court scared in one or the other is someone holding the judiciary twisting it in one or the other that these reforms are not coming through well let's look first of all at the three arms of government we have mm. the executive we have the judiciary of uh, the legislature mm. none of each one of those is supposed to order mm -hmm. they're supposed to be cooperative yeah yeah, yeah that is a pr the general principle of these three arms of government and therefore yes the supreme court court did its job and uh, it came out with this uh, it's a verdict as far as these electoral reforms are concerned mm. but of course government has to look at these things in the sense that uh, w because they have budgetary and financial implications and therefore um that definitely determines the speed at which the government is going to come with these electoral reforms and table them before uh, the floor of parliament. And uh, I want to believe that definitely government has 
they had issues in as far as financial implications of these uh, electoral reforms are concerned. And that's why um, now the Electoral Commission, because let's remember that also the NRM wants these reforms. It is, it's not really the only the opposition that really is yearning for these reforms. Even the NRM itself wants these reforms, yesterday in fact. But you see, you have to plan, because there are financial implications, as I've said, mm -hmm. and budgetary, budgetary <coughs> implications. Now, you and I also know that the budget has just been read, okay, a month ago, something mm -hmm. like that. And the monies are now going to begin to flow. And you also remember that the the Constitutional Review Commission membership where has, is fully constituted. Mm -hmm. So in my view, that shows the commitment of government in as far as having these electoral reforms tabled before Parliament and then subsequently, of course, pass them. But probably not even in their entirety, because, I mean, the opposition definitely has got what they, I mean, they, they, they have their preferences in as far as the electoral reforms are concerned. But remember that there is also the other side, which is the NRM, and has a majority in Parliament, has also a majority in terms of the national vote. Mm. And therefore, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the electoral reforms, the way they are well, preferred in as far as the opposition is concerned, mm. are going to be passed in that very form. That may not be possible. But the spirit that there should be electoral reforms, I think the NRM administration, the URM7 administration, is very committed and that's why there is uh, a constitutional review commission fully mm -hmm. constituted yeah. but there are financial and budgetary implications that's why the work of that constitutional review commission is going to come well after the budget reading which we have okay. Sarah, government is failure to table the electoral reforms as ordered by the supreme court within 30 days what does this mean and what next are we looking at I, I want first to give some some <coughs> background mm. we all know that the NRM Oh, the NRA then went to the bush mm. on a contested election. Of course. The major reason President Museven and his team took up guns and occupied parts of Ruero <coughs> was the assumption that the 1980 elections were rigged. Mm -hmm. This is a government that has been in power for now 33 years, mm. but it is still teasing the people about substantial electoral reforms. Mm. So if we were to question history, where are they justified to take up arms mm -hmm. against an assumed rigged election when they have been in power for more than three decades? Mm -hmm. Three of the elections under the 1995 Constitution have been contested in the Supreme Court. That is 2001, <coughs> 2006, and 2016. Mm. In all the three election petitions, the Supreme Court has held that the elections in this country fall far before, below what is contained in the Constitution. Mm. If you go under Article 1, and I will call it the most abused article, because people just say power belongs to the people. Mm. They don't tell the people how that power belongs to them. Under Article 1, power belongs to the people who will exercise it in accordance with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. All authority of government emanates from the people. Mm. All institutions of government derive their power through the will and consent of the people. Mm. And in clause 4, <coughs> the will and consent of the people shall be quantified through regular free and fair elections. So if when you have a situation mm. where there is no commitment to put in place an environment or a framework for free and fair elections, mm -hmm. does this government govern according to the will of the people? We have three court pe judgments mm. saying the will of the people is not properly quantified. Mm. Court went out of the way and said, look, these are the recommendations, and there were ten. One is on the filing determination of petitions, which has been enacted through the Age Limit Bill by, mm. by Magazine. The second <coughs> recommendation is on the nature of evidence to allow for oral evidence. Yep. The third recommendation <coughs> is on time for fresh elections in the case the elections are set aside. Because the reason Supreme Court has at times dallied on setting aside the elections is they think 20 days are not sufficient for electoral commission mm. to, to organize fresh elections and, they, and they, it should be extended to two months. Use of technology. Mm. In the last election <coughs> we had biometric voting but there was no enabling law for that biometric voting. So it could have been challenged, saying, look, the, the elections you conducted are not in accordance with the laws of the land. Mm. 
and that is very critical. We, we had a equal use of state media, mm. and there is a court ruling where BCG had booked for space on UBC, mm. paid, mm. and denied an appearance. And court ruled in his favor for, for, for him to be compensated. And the Supreme Court ordered that any media manager or host that does such a thing mm. should be punished in their individual capacities. If it is a decision of the manager, if it is a decision of the board, mm. they should be punished. There is a late enactment of relevant legislation, and Supreme Court ruled that electoral reforms should be done in the first two years of Parliament. We are in the fourth year. <laughs> that one has already been violated beyond, beyond compensation. Another one is that the nations during the election period, mm. especially for the president, to go carrying on donations. You can look at his uh, Operation Wealth Creation Tour. Mm. Each tour is budgeted at $4.4 billion. The and president said yes. he's, he's working within the presidential act. That yes, sir, I know the supplementary budget mm. that was approved. It yes. too is 4.4 billion, and mm. he's all over the country campaigning ahead of others. We have a situation of involvement of public officers mm. in political campaigns. We have a situation where civil servants, where police, mm. where UPDF engage in partisan politics in violation of the Constitution, in violation of the Political Parties and Organizations mm. Act. Section 16 of the Political Parties and Organizations Act is very clear on prohibiting members of the UPDF, mm. members of the police <coughs> force, members of the prison service from any partisan engagement. But this is the norm in this country. Mm. So given the nature of these elections mm. and our background of conflict arising out of elections, mm. what is the problem of the regime? That is where we're looking, Ambassador. What is the way forward around this? Because there are 10 recommendations and some of these are way long over. Yes, you said there are some uh, some details here, some some issues, some budget issues. The budget has just been read. But one of, of, of the recommendations goes back as four years back. No, and as I've said, and I've I rightly echoed what I said before, <coughs> because uh, these things have got financial implications. But I want to appreciate the first point which was made by my colleague, Sarah, mm. that uh, the, uh, the Constitution, Article 1, of course, says power belongs to the people. And these are the very people who have been actually going for these elections. And but we tell the people how they exercise their power. Well, that's one of the ways of exercising <coughs> that power is to go for those elections. And therefore, that, that's an exercise of that power, which they have. Go for elections, I mean, all these kinds of things which have been, whether it's national, elections, whether it is by-elections, whether it is uh, LOC elections that we held just recently, mm -hmm. towards the end of last year, and all this quite a quite number of other things which are, which happened in as far as that power is concerned. But let's, let's not uh, really uh, hold up so much, because the fact of the matter is, democracy takes time to develop or to grow. 33 because years. If you have, 33 years, yes, but I gave you an example of the U.S., which has had democracy for the last 250 years. <laughs> and here we are. Actually, it's not 33 years when we had democracy, because you remember we had a movement, mm. system of government in this country. Mm. Then in 2005 is when actually multi-party democracy, and I'm happy that I took part in making sure that multi-party democracy in this country takes root. Mm. Because you remember we had that referendum which in which the people of this country decided that we should go back to multi-party system, which we did. Mm. And so it's about only 12 years. So let's not you talk about, let's talk about the movement, about the movement system, democracy. and that's why I opposed the movement system. Mm. And I advocated you, you know, we've inhabited this country for quite a bit of time, <laughs> more than half a century, 54 years. I'm old enough to know what we have gone so through. So you inhabited because the, we have, we, we have inhabited this country uh, for the last 54 years. In other yes. words, some 54 four, four, four years I agree. of age. So we had a movement system, which I actually objected to, and I said we must go multi-party. Mm. And I remember that time we campaigned that we should have a multi-party democracy in this country. And this, so you this have is just about is 12, 13 years. NRM is a political party. If you want to add the way it was registered it's actually nrmo it's nrmo that is the party mm. which was registered and so but of course along the way the o has been lost so in as far as these things concerned people <laughs> most of the time talk about the nrm so we moved from that movement system mm -hmm. to a multi-party democracy mm -hmm. and this is what we have but if you're going to expect that in the last 12 12 or 13 years mm. since 2005 when we had a, we had a referendum in which we decided that we go multi-party mm. that democracy in this country is going to be 
be as robust as it is in the U.S., then we will not be drinking from the same Holy Grail. Ambassador, if what you, can make us drink from the same Holy Grail mm. is to understand that democracy will take root over time. Let's you, you, people must be patient because when you hurry, you will break it. I understand. Yes. But at the, at the grounds leveled, at a time where everyone is saying, uh, um, I, I will actually jump to the Public Order Management Act, where it does not allow other players to hold any, any public gathering without police clearing it. Yesterday we had a scenario in Luero where the DP were in a hall, a community hall, Fahima, they had paid. They were in a hall, they were in a meeting, in, in a hall, gazetted hall. Police said it was not notified about such an assembly. And this is happening when the president is having countrywide tours. Of course, according to the Presidential Act, he's allowed to do that. At the grounds level, when others actually being heated left, right, and center. And Ambassador Maiga is saying, democracy, democracy, democracy. Of course, we have to talk about it because, I mean, if we don't, then who will? Who will? <laughs> we have to talk about it. But compare what happened. Mm. What happened in, I mean, in these various hotels? Mm. And what happened when? Mugisha Munt was launching ANT. Mm -hmm. What happened? Because they, I mean, they were allowed because they went through the process. You remember? Mm -hmm. And so they were allowed. I think they were at Serena. I was not in this country, but of course I could follow mm -hmm. the the kinds of things that were happening in the media. Yeah. Uh, that Mugisha Munt was allowed to launch the ANT, mm -hmm. and there was no real stoppage, mm -hmm. and as far as that was concerned. So, I mean, people in this country must accept where you live. Mm -hmm. The laws are respected to the latter. Let me give you an example. Mm. For instance, you know, Beijing is, 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 is a semi-desert, mm. and all the trees have been planted, but just cutting a branch of a tree will earn you a very big sentence in prison. But here, people are saying that the poma is a problem. Fine, that is, of course, they are right. Mm. But in the circumstances that are obtaining at the moment, it's the law which is operational, mm. which is operating. And therefore, whoever wants to do these kinds of things, where there's meetings and so on, must apply to the police until court pronounces itself that actually sec or strikes out some sections of the poma. Mm. But otherwise, there are countries, for instance, like in the UK, if you must stage a demonstration and all these kinds of things, mm. which the opposition, of course, has been talking about in this country, you must apply to the police two weeks before, and you must have stewards or prefects mm. that must keep order, law and order, and you must agree with the police, the routing of the demonstration, mm. and all these kinds of things. And those people actually respect those rules. Apart from during the time, I think, of Tony Blair, well, Cameron, I think, was yeah, prime minister in the UK when there were riots, mm. you remember? Yeah. Those people went overboard, they didn't respect the law. Mm. And there were riots, and they banned shops, they banned all sorts of things, and so on. Yeah. So but we must learn to, 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 even if it is not the NRM in, in government, and it's probably the opposition who are in government, they will make sure that this law Have you seen is some, uh, some, some security organs going overboard and they get partisan in a way? Well, I mean, there are always those of uh, zealous people, mm. wherever you go, even in the opposition, they're there. I mean, how do you throw stones at the presidential convoy? How, how do you do that? Mm. Even if you're disagreeing with him, seven, respect his convoy because he's the current president of the state. Of the nation. So everybody, are, I'm sure there are quite a number of people mm. within the security forces. Let's and so look so at our... We'll go overboard. 2021, people powers come out strongly, it has given all this. Um, the, the way the coordination looks, the team, it looks more like a regional balanced cabinet from a layman's eye. Sarah, does this bring a little bit of fume and steam in the political arena come 2021? You who is actually looking at the governance on ground? It's a well-composed team. Mm -hmm. Each region is represented. There was a debate on where MP Gaffa, whether mm. he comes from Angkole or not. I, yes, I, yes. I saw, I saw you saw it online. <laughs> yes, I saw, I saw that online. <laughs> but I'm aware that his father comes from Angkole, so mm. I don't know where he pays allegiance to. Yeah. But that aside, I think it is important for all political prayers mm. to get organized because we have a constitutional calendar for elections five years. Mm. There was an attempt at one time parliament to extend their tenure to mm. Additional two years, mm. it is not possible because the tenure of the president is entrenched mm. and that must be done in a referendum. Mm. So, anybody interested in playing a part in active politics mm. must plan for the five year calendar. Will the people power affect the opposition and the NRM exactly when we get now to the, to the real game? I, I know there's a lot of disorganization in the opposition, mm. but you can't say that a new player 
is disorganizing the opposition. Okay. That means that the old players must be too disorganized to be upset by a new player. Mm. So I think they should welcome all the players. Mm. After all, what they are interested in is perceived to be change of power. Yeah. So the best thing they can do is either to negotiate a principled coalition mm -hmm. or to let every player do their bit. You know, and it can work either way. Either you have a coalition mm -hmm. that if it is strong, it fails the 50 plus 1 percent for the incumbent, or you have each player going their ways, mm -hmm. and in total, they also fail the, five, the 50 plus 1 percent. What does it mean to the NRM now that people power has come out strongly? Does it scare the NRM? Does it excite NRM? Does it inform the NRM to go back to the to the red work and they say now let's plan better? Not by a particle. <laughs> not by a particle. That's what you said. Absolutely, it's not by it doesn't scare the NRM. Not even by a particle, mm. uh, because uh, I mean the NRM is, is a season the political organization <laughs> right from the bush days. Mm. Yeah, because you know I'm opposed to this administration before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I only came on board somewhere in 2010 mm. because uh, I will not you always call it you got born again, you got saved. I, I got saved from, I, I came out of the desert and I went to the forest. Mm. To but uh, um, the fact of the matter is not by a particle, it's mm. the NRM shaken because um, the NRM goes, has got national structures, fully constituted. Now I, I see of course colleagues um, from the opposition mm. uh, having issues in as far as uh, putting structures on the ground and you see that's where the support comes from. You're not going to make a noise in Kampala here or in hotels. I'm surprised the Magere people are complaining about not having their meeting yesterday in hotels. That's where the vote, that's not where the vote is. The vote is actually on the ground. Of course, people are going to say that uh, uh, they are not being allowed to go to the ground. But I, I have seen quite a number of opposition people going down to the ground to uh, really canvas for support. That has been possible in many uh, places. And uh, it's all, you know, fighting an incumbency, mm. an incumbent, mm. is not something that you're going to do, uh, or somebody is going to give you power on a silver plate. You must fight. It's a fight. Not only in Uganda, but all over the world. Mm. You must, it's a fight. In the incumbents, I mean, President, I've had people, for instance, arguing against uh, President Yorim Seven going all over the country and all these kinds of things. But uh, mm. <laughs> he, looks like he's he looks like he's campaigning. He looks like he's campaigning according to the reforms they give away. Because Saying even the constituting, even the constituting the structures yesterday mm. in Magere, mm. I think, was campaigning. Yeah, but nobody stopped them. Mm. So if in the hotels you don't have problems, I mean you are having problems, go to Magera and have your things. And so it happened yesterday. Mm. Yeah, so and there was nobody stopping them. So what is the problem? You are not going to make any political marriage by going to Sheraton. Otherwise, mm. you actually turn into an elitist group or organization. Mm. The way TFM, if you remember TFM, which yes. was formerly the Makere University, yes, lecturers, yes. I used to work in Makere University. I worked there for almost 25 years. Mm. And I remember TFM when it was created. It was a lecture theater <laughs> organization. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. But actually, I'm not you you dubbed it a lecture theater, really? Absolutely. It suffered a still bath because this was an elitist <laughs> thing and all mm. these kinds of things. The vote is in the villages. The vote is with the common, common person. And that's mm. why, why I'm seven beats everybody. Mm. I traveled with the president in, from 2010, 2011, mm. and I could see he never really did he have rallies in the towns. Most of his rallies were actually deep down in the villages, and that's where the vote is. And so if people think that going to Sheraton to launch themselves is where the vote is, <laughs> I can see a lot of doom <laughs> on the part of the opposition. <laughs> Coming 2021, uh, 20, uh, that is the conversation we are having online. A couple of you have actually uh, thrown a little bit of um, feedback there. Sarah, you have something itching you want to pass? Yes, I wanted to talk a bit on the reforms. Mm. There are four mm. electoral reform bills yeah. that were presented in Supreme Court mm. when the Attorney General was re responding to the application of same paper, mm. Katiba and Professor Juko. Yeah. The bills are ready. Mm. Actually, the rules, the rules of presidential elections were changed. Mm. And a signed document by the Chief Justice filed mm. in court. Mm. And the bills presented in full. And the you know, court records are public. We have access to these bills. Mm. There are some evil clauses. Like? There's a, an evil clause banning cameras from all polling stations and none of the electoral laws mm. define the polling station. If I can take an example of my polling station where I vote from in mm. Bushenyi, in, in a Chizoba sub-county, mm. we vote at a parish center. 
and there are like five polling stations mm. that vote at the same time on one center. Mm. So the polling station in that sense means the whole parish headquarters. Mm. So if you say you cannot have a camera or any gadget that mm. has a camera, including all our phones, mm. are you saying I cannot access this parish headquarters with, for example, my phone? <laughs> that is a problem and it's an intention to stop transparency of the electoral process. It's right. a very evil mm. clause. I understand and um I, I, I want you to respond to that. I really love Ikomeja on both lanes. Uh, she doesn't feel comfortable with that, just like any other person in the country. You're burning cameras and telephones? At yes, the, at the polling centers. Because we need evidence. Yes, if and, it, and if, it, if I may explain mm. further, if you look at the recent concluded South African elections, yeah. I know South Africa is ahead of us, but there were cameras in the poll booth, yeah. and we saw videos of people voting. There mm. was somebody who fell in the booth. Yeah. I think he had taken a bit too much a previous night. So what modern countries do with advancement of technology, they safeguard the secrets of the vote. Mm. Like in that South African booth, as much as it is online, mm. you cannot see the choice of the person. Yeah. That would have been a concern. Say maybe the secrets of the ballot mm. is at stake. But you're saying don't come to a police station with any <laughs> budget. So what are the electoral observers going to do? Oh, yeah. Well I, I, well, I will give you an experience in 1980. Mm. Well, somebody went to State Square. I'm not going to name names because this is an old man and mm. he's already passed. He went to State Square and began announcing results, results from a nearby polling station. That was wrong. Yeah, that was wrong. And probably this is the reasoning why. It was not a returning thing Because you see, our people took rough, especially when it comes to social media. They are going to actually portray a different story from what's happening at the polling station. Mm. And I want to believe that this is the philosophy behind ensuring that there are no cameras, there are no telephones and all this kinds of things at the polling station because mm. these things have happened before. You remember even in the last elections in 2016, people had begun announcing different things and uh, so on and so so to avoid all those kinds of things. I mm. think no cameras, I, no telephones and all these kinds of things. <coughs> of late. You see, we, of late we have, we have, we have square, an option I, called live. I, I didn't finish the, the <laughs> argument at the square because somebody, an old man, yeah. began announcing the results which were actually fake. That was in 80. That but was in today, 80. But now we've even improved the technology. Yes. Because that technology can, can be abused. No, what I'm saying, yes. I can just go live on my phone and whatever the returning officer is saying is what is going live on phone. I'm not doing nothing. You I'm just see, putting my camera before you. I can understand mm. if you're talking about you of cameras and telephones yes. or social media if you want mm. in advanced societies like in the west where mm. if there is voting there I mean, the, 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 these even machines where you go and punch yeah. the vote and all this the kind of thing. yeah but in our circumstances i think we're not developed to that level and if a maiga mm. is crafted which mm. i am not <laughs> what i will do is go with a phone or uh, camera yeah. and i portray it i can even there is even a shop 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 it's called uh, photoshop photoshop photoshopping mm. mm. i can photoshop something which is not true and then i begin to transmit to social media so cameras and the telephones yes for me i agree they so how, so, so how, how until we, such a time mm. when you have become as sophisticated as it is in the west so how do the observers uh, and come out their work and, and journalists how are we going well, to how have they been doing it in the past no they have they have free they have been free the the reports, right? The reports. But they have not been prohibited. You have seen pictures of candidates voting, Ambassador. Have you ever yeah. seen them? I'm sure it was also comes on I've, I've the, 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 Well, I, I don't understand what you're saying because the fact of the matter is, <laughs> observers have been at this polling station and all these things have been happening. And uh, this is a new law. Okay, let's I, let's, let's sample let's, let's sample a couple of feedback. I agree. Let's sample a couple of feedback offline. And David Day is having some feedback from online. Uh, people are giving their responses about this entire conversation. David, um, well, very very interesting uh, conversation going on there. <coughs> Excuse me. And the poll question we have this morning is what do you make of the People Power Coordination Team? Will it have any impact on the country's <laughs> politics ahead of the 2021 elections? And um, we'll begin off with uh, Facebook. Alex Alexander says, I think this is another comedy show that we have been missing of <laughs> late. Um, Matthew Ganaf, uh, good morning to you. You say it's a good gesture to coordinate, but some members are not formidable since uh, the umbrella is for all cats and dogs. A dog working with a cat for the same objective 
is what is not yet explained properly. Ah, interesting. Uh, Matthew, uh, thank you very much. Eid bin Eid, good morning to you. You say a winning team with no any political corruption. Bobby comes from us, not a member from the hashtag Bushmen. He's never been in the government, corruption scandal, not a member of old politics be best on tribalism, secretarism, <laughs> political patronage. Bobby is Mr. Clean. Ah, okay, interesting. Um, Kibs Idrin Kibando, you say, now let the games begin. Um, Nakaro Winnie, you say, determination uh, with um, a gas of fuel, what you call a fuel uh, pump, uh, right on uh, below. That is uh, your comments. Dennis Suley, say, apart from excitement, who has a genuine reason to vote for Bobby Wine? Okay. Uh, Martin at Tuhaire on Twitter. Uh, you say, the sky is the limit. I think they are not a bunch, but rather a firm movement taking shape. Uh, Kelly in Subuga, you say, a baby on Navia pa, King 72, the last minute. All those are money making schemes for their families, not to serve the interests of Ugandans. Uh, very, very interesting comments. Uh, Baguma Chris, good morning to you. you say, I say, 90% are DP members. Who are behind Mbabazi in the last elections? So, this is Songa. Um, Alex, Alexander, good morning. You say, um, you think this is another comedy show. I think we've covered that. Uh, but, uh, Andrew, very interesting opinions from well, the people, Daniel. There you have it. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. And while we're winding it up, uh, Sarah Birete, what do you, what do you make of the entire team currently? I think there's a bit of excitement mm -hmm. in general in the population about 2021. Mm -hmm. But this excitement will not come to its fruitfulness if we do not have substantial electoral reforms. Mm. And if I may quote, beyond what the Supreme Court recommended, mm. we have seen challenges, for example, of the leadership at Parliament. Mm. You have a speaker who is a vice chairperson mm. of a ruling party, and you see her in Chobe, mm. in Weya, attending sec retreats mm. in her capacity as a sec member. So you have a, an arm of government mm. that is steered by people mm. with partisan responsibilities. So among the recommendations, it would be ideal that if an MP is elected speaker and deputy speaker, mm. they step down from any leadership in their parties. Mm. So that you do not have to see a speaker attending a SEC meeting. Because how is she expected now to steer the debate, a neutral debate, when matters like age limit that are endorsed in SEC are before Parliament. Okay. Ambassador Maiga. Well, uh, Bobby Wine is clean. The only power which I know can declare whether somebody is clean or not is mm. God. Mm. Yeah, you cannot come here and begin to convince me that anybody is clean. Mm. Mr. Clean, I had a reference to, <laughs> and I don't want to name names. So it's uh, in my view because I'm a Christian. Mm. So clean or not clean, that's uh, God's responsibility. She's talking about Speaker resigning mm. after from his leadership, or her party. party leadership. Mm leadership whatever in the UK mm. as you know the speaker resigns yes yeah, the current speaker resigned from uh, from the party. whatever yeah, yeah. Mm. and so in the US is different mm. you remain in your party so this is just a matter of conjunction in my view and as far as I'm concerned mm. in the US it works well in the UK it works well mm. so we can debate that and if yeah. you agree mm. that one resigns fine we go towards that fruit mm. if they don't agree the current situation will obtain mm. uh, people power mm. as I said before uh, scratching the NRM, not even by a particle, mm. um, because of the structures which are uh, very strong, robust mm. of the NRM. And uh, in my view, I think Papa is just replacing Kiza Besige. <laughs> they are eating into his support, uh -huh. and I think in a very short time it will be gone. They are not eating into the NRM support. There are six NRM mm. Well, those have been robots. <laughs> well, there you go. That brings us to the end of our four. conversation. It was an honor to have Sarah Virete and, of course, Ambassador Maiga. And right now, let's connect it to Mbide, who is giving us the traffic update right on the road. Mbide? Thank you for watching Morning at NTV. This is Stephen Mbide coming to you live from Chaliwajara and this is Chira Municipality.
one of the key uh, suburbs of uh, fine suburbs of Nakawa Division, uh, because for a few meters from here, you'll be joining Naria, that is on my extreme right, uh, that Naria is in Nakawa Division, while uh, behind me is the road leading you towards the Chila roundabout, that is from Chila roundabout, you'll be connecting to Najira, and from Najira, you join uh, Chiwatule to Ntinda Trading Center. I was coming from Chira roundabout. I saw a long stretch of traffic jam, snake-like, uh, flowing towards the Najira side, and that side was also leading you uh, towards uh, Ntinda Junction, where you would also uh, find uh, five to six, uh, eight minutes of your delay time as you move uh, towards the city direction. But here at Chaliwajala is one of the areas that is well known for uh, high level of cream Criminality, and of course, this has contributed to uh, the reason being that there is no lighting system. And part of the reason that's why they set up this police station that is just right on my hand, right hand side. As you drive from Naria side, that is off the northern bypass, uh, sloping uh, towards this trading junction here, uh, on your way towards Namugongo, Sunday uh, to Seta, and uh, maybe to connect to Namugongo, just know that there is a temporary delay that is going to take some months uh, from uh, this area as you connect towards the Matas Shrine at Namugongo. This is just because a Ministry of Water with uh, National Water and Security Corporation are uh, 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 carrying out uh, some underground uh, works that is uh, uh, installation of uh, transmission pipes uh, for water that will be transported towards Kato C, uh, that is in Mokono district. And this, uh, because they are digging up the roads here uh, to fix the pipes there, they are causing a lot of delays and traffic jam for the people 